Hola cafeños. <laughs> We're Cafe Con Leche Travels. My name is Travis. And I'm David. And it is so early in the morning, and you know what that means. We're traveling. <laughs> so, let's go. This week, we are headed back to the States to work on getting our temporary residency. So we're not sure how this video is gonna end. We're hoping it's gonna end with, we got our residency! Yay! Please. But it could end differently. <laughs> But this worked out with the Thanksgiving holiday we're gonna go celebrate and get to see some family and friends and hopefully get a consulate appointment. Pretty please. But of course it starts with a 5.30 a.m. pickup by Luis. <laughs> so we have to go. Luis, thank you so much. He's a champ. If you need a driver in Merida to come pick you up at any hour of the day, reliable, safe, with a big car and a bigger heart, call Luis. His information's gonna be below. As always, he's the best. All right, let's go. Today's the day. We're doing it. We are going to apply for a temporary residency visa in Washington, DC. Our appointments are at 10 and 10.40. We have separate appointments, but we are leaving early. It is 7.45 right now because we forgot one crucial element, which uh, you need original bank statements. So we need to go to our bank and have them somehow make an original bank statement. We're not entirely sure what that means. Do they print it out at the bank? Do they sign it? Do they stamp it? We'll find out. We'll let you know. So many things, but we will have a complete rundown of everything you will need after this process has been fulfilled. Hopefully it's been successfully fulfilled. <laughs> In like three hours. I don't know why I'm nervous. It shouldn't be. Like... I'm not nervous whatsoever. Well, here's what I'll say. I I do not feel entitled to get a visa. So I know that this is a privilege and I just hope that the person that we meet with separately grants it to us because it's totally up to them. <laughs> and there's nothing, you know, we can have some little thing wrong and they're like, no, thank you. And I'm like, you're right, it's your country. So hopefully they will see how much we love Mexico and let us stay for a bit longer. Ooh. All right, we'll see you on the other side. So we did it. It is done, it is completed. <laughs> and now we're gonna drive home because it is very cold. Yeah. In DC. Do not miss this. We will give you what our experience was like as well of a breakdown of what you'll need when you go get your temporary visa. When we get home. And we're back. Woo, that did not take as short as I thought it was gonna take. No, all in all, it was like a three hour journey. More about half an hour to the consulate. The appointments themselves took like maybe 45 minutes each, an hour each. Yeah, I had to do some back and forth, but I'll get into that a little bit later. So why do you need a temporary residency visa? Well, I mean, recently, and I'm sure if you've been interested in traveling, especially to Mexico, you've kind of heard news about immigration being kind of reformed a little bit. From what we understand, the availability of the 180 day tourist visa to long term expats, people who are moving and who are living in Mexico, immigration is starting to curtail that availability. They are still giving out 180 day visas. They are just, from what we've heard, a little harder to come by than before, which was willy nilly, everyone got 180 days as soon as they landed. So we don't want to kind of put fear into you if you're wanting to travel. I feel like you still should do it. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we were temporary residents the first year we lived in Mexico this past year, and now our plan is to travel around. And so we are gonna be 
technically tourists. Yeah. So either way, it's not, we're not breaking any laws. We're not overstaying any visas. If we have a tourist visa, we are tourists. And if we have a temporary residency visa, we are in a way temporary residents. Right. With that being said, it's still under the discretion of the immigration people. Yes. So we are technically tourists, but if they want to give us two days, <laughs> then and we get two days. Their country. So the process for applying for a temporary residency visa for us coming from the United States was relatively straightforward. A lot of paperwork. Actually, not a lot of paperwork. Yeah, it wasn't too much. Paperwork and an appointment at the consulate. The first thing you need to do is make an appointment at the consulate. You can do that online at your local consulate or wherever is closest to where you're gonna be. We are staying in the DC area. So for us, we went to the DC consulate, but you can find all the consulates online and I believe they all make appointments online. For us, we had to make the appointment a month out and they didn't open the December dates until the last week of November. So actually, the day we flew out of Merida in the airport, we made our appointments because that was the day they opened up for the December appointments and we got the first one we could, which was today. I'm sure you've heard it said too that every consulate is different. So if you speak to one person that went to one consulate and one person that went to another one, do not trust that because they are all different. All states are different. So just know that going into it. Yes, the czar experience at the Washington DC consulate. After you get your appointment, then you're gonna get all your paperwork together. What paperwork do you need, David? So what you need is six months worth of bank statements. This is probably the most important. They wanna see that you are financially solvent and not going to be a burden on the Mexican government. So from what we understand, there are different thresholds of income requirements for the, at different consulates. For the DC consulate, it was about $2,200 a month, meaning your income needed to show after taxes that you have direct deposits in your bank account from a regular company totaling more than $2,200 a month. This does not include Venmo payments. This does not include PayPal payments. And it has to show over the last six months that you've maintained that threshold. So if you just got a job that is giving you over $2,200 a month, wait six more months and then apply for your temporary residency because it, they will be going six months back up until the day of the appointment. David had to run to FedEx in the middle of the appointment to print his most current bank statement. Yeah, my bank statement wasn't currently available yet. So what they allowed me to do is get my transaction history in a PDF form. Because they wanted to see his last paycheck. Right. Like a week ago or whatever. Yeah. So they check, they're looking, so make sure you have that. For the DC consulate, they ask you to highlight every direct deposit so they can quickly glance as they go through your six months. Also, we had to go to a bank location here in DC, <laughs> kind of last minute because we didn't really realize, but you're gonna need to get an official stamp on those statements. And for me, I use Chase Bank. And so they were just able to put a stamp of the address and the location, and they didn't even need a signature at all. And we've heard from different people that's more important, less important, because back in the day, there were like official bank statements and the ones you printed off online. Now, even if you go to the bank, the official statement is gonna be what they print on um, the same one that you're gonna print at home. Right. We've heard that people haven't gone to the bank and gotten it stamped and it hasn't been a problem. So just know that. We just wanted to be extra safe and so we got everything stamped. You will also need six months of your current pay stubs as well. So I had to do that, uh, a copy of those for myself and a copy for them. And then after that, that's the hardest part, if there is a hard part. After that, it's pretty straightforward. You are gonna fill out the application that's on the website, print that out, double-sided, fill that out in black ink. You're gonna make a photocopy of your passport and obviously bring that with you. We brought two copies of everything, bring two or three copies just so you have extra if they need them and the fee which is $44 which we think you can pay in cash but we paid in a card and a passport photo we got a little confused on that just make sure that you look online for your country and your specific consulate location to see what those measurements are you're gonna bring a passport photo and they're not going to use the passport photo in the visa because they are gonna take your picture at the consulate but we think the passport photo is for like their files yes so have that 
and then you are good to go. It's not that crazy. While you're waiting, the process is not scary. It's not intimidating. You just literally wait. Uh, there was nobody else there. So, I mean, it was really quick and fast. They kind of check everything right in front of you. You wait. If they need anything, they were really kind and let you, let you know. Like I said, they let me run to FedEx twice because I just didn't have the right dates on my transaction history for the last statement I didn't have. And they just waited and let me, let me come back. Uh, it was very smooth, very easy. And so from now, the process is you have the temporary visa in your passport. When you land in Mexico, you have 30 days from the time you get the stamp in your passport to arriving in Mexico and visiting the, your local immigration office. And they give you a list of the, what those requirements are. So you have those on your person also to reference back when you make that appointment. Again, that was just our experience that we wanted to share. It's going to be different for you probably, especially if you're a married person. Again, if you come from a different place other than the United States, there may be different requirements. So make sure you check the website thoroughly just so you don't have to do the run around that I did. And give yourself time, time to make the appointment, time to get all your documents together. This is not a process you wanna rush, not a process you wanna have the appointment on Monday and leave for Mexico on Tuesday if you don't have to. So the more planning you can give yourself, the less crazy it's gonna feel. And if something does go wrong, or if something does change and you get to the consulate and you might not have everything, you have time to get it all together and make another appointment. If you have any questions or a totally different experience with your consulate or visa visit, let us know, leave them in the comments so you can help other people who are going through this process. Yes, let us know. All right, we come out with new videos every week. So if you're not subscribed yet, what are you doing? Subscribe, like. We actually have some new little toys and bells and whistles that we can't wait to show you guys. Yes, we do. So we have a lot of travel coming up, like we said, for the next year. So many more adventures, so many more cities to see. If you have a recommendation for us, for things to go, places to do, food to eat, always, always, always leave those in the comments because we go through them every week and just add them to our bucket list. Yes, we do. And if you are not a member yet, come and join the Cafe and Your crew. You can connect with us on Patreon and get into our private community where we share exclusive content and you get to connect with your fellow Hello, Cafeños. It's a party, y'all. All right, here comes our tagline. Hasta luego. We'll see you next time.